So the Book of Bill has just came out and now that it's out, I can kind of discuss it a little bit more. And my initial thoughts around this book were much different in that the fact that I think that this book shouldn't have been made um, because at least to me seemed like it was more for an adult uh, angle to it that the show just doesn't have. I don't think we need to talk down to kids necessarily when it comes to maturity, but there is things that are appropriate and things that are not appropriate, especially for children. And I think the reputation that Gravity Falls has had has always ha been tethered to a children identity because it was a kid show. To me, not the best decision. It's kind of irresponsible in my opinion and I don't really think it's a great idea. It's like with any show, if you were to take any kind of show that has some sort of association with a children media, then I, I don't think it should be uh, twisted and made in deranged because it neglects the new generation of people that are re-experiencing the show for themselves. That's what you have to understand. You aren't the only generation that is going to watch the show. The people that watch, like me, for example, I'm that generation that watched the show. Not everybody is going to grow up in the same time that I grew up, and they're probably going to re-experience the show just like myself. And if they go looking other places online, they're going to assume that, oh, this is a Gravity Falls book. Uh, let me buy this. Now, this is obviously very hypothetical and you know, who who's to say whether or not the impact of this book is going to be uh, bad for people that are children. Children are drawn to this sort of thing. We shouldn't be making this content for them. It's just not the best thing. As the show has matured over time, the show has had this expectation that it needs to have some sort of grittier version of it um, in the modern day, which I don't really think is sound. Something good on paper doesn't mean that it's a good idea when you put it out there in the world, okay? A lot of interesting things about this book that I can get into. One of which is that this is after the show. I will say that the, the reveal that Bill is basically trapped in this place. Now he is back and seemingly he's not dead. Now the book talks about this a little bit more. The answer might seem a little bit uh, underwhelming because you know like at the end of the series we know that like he dies basically and then something happens to him he he says something in reverse and and when you decode the message backwards he's saying he's basically talking to the axolotl now throughout the series there actually is imagery of an axolotl that appears mainly in the uh i think it was like the fish tank right and if you guys don't know mythology has um a god basically that is like an axolotl and it's i think it's this might be based off aztec mythology the god of twins is apparently an axolotl anyway essentially what happens is this book kind of reveals that he was never really dead most people had so many different theories and different ideas around what happened to bill after he was defeated in the ending of the show now most people can explain this in in many ways when you decode one of the ciphers in the show it tells you that bill is going to sort of reincarnate into something else or take some new form right and in this way it does continue off of that and it does explain that bill is in this place it's it's like the mixture of the word therapy in prison so it's called thera prison um and basically it's like a place where these villains i guess go like these powerful beings uh go to get rehabilitated or whatnot and i think that's interesting so these villains get rehabilitated in, in some way of some form, which I think is kind of underwhelming of an explanation. Now there is some more to this that I need to talk about and discuss about that goes into more um, more detail um, and that there is probably more here than we're not that meets the eye because you would assume that uh, this is where just that all that ends like with Bill Cipher. He has to wait to get reincarnated into something else, right? That's kind of the, the idea here. but. I think there's more going on with this book, especially since that there's some sort of, like, it seems like Bill Cipher is maybe taking control of Alex Hirsch, and it seems like it's going in some sort of direction where the light that we shine, he reflects black, right? Does that make sense? Does that analogy make sense? The, the light that we shine, he reflects back, and it's weird because, you know, he's in a different, uh, almost a fictional universe, right? And it's weird that he's communicating in such a way. Um, now, I've made a video, um, called Last Laugh, which is kind of going into this idea. So, um, Alex Hirsch, I did this idea before you. So, pretty sure I did, made this idea way before Alex Hirsch decided to put it in the book. Hey, but you know, it's okay, Alex. Um, you probably already had this idea kicking around even before I did, but you, you, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I was, I, I'm one of the uh, first people to make like an entire video basically based around this whole concept of Bill Cipher breaking out of his, um, 
two-dimensional um, confines and sort of breaking out of that and breaking out of, the, out of his shackles and sort of coming into the real world as almost this idea that is real uh, to us. He just exists exists as a character, but he's becoming something bigger than than uh, than just a character. Bill's presence is getting stronger within uh, Alex Hirsch, which would make sense because it seems like he's been teasing this for a while that there's some connection that Bill has to Alex because when the uh, finale, the the special, you know, the end of season two, in the actual theme song, you can actually see that the name uh, Alex Hirsch changes into Bill Cipher. Alex Hirsch's control is almost being usurped by Bill Cipher in some way. Alex Hirsch is teasing. Like, this is just a tease for something else. Like, Alex Hirsch is building something, um, and I don't know what he's doing, but it seems like there's something, right, that is going to come after this. Now, Alex Hirsch has said that there is going to be, uh, possibly, he's having talks with Disney to create a, a new, something Browdy Falls related, which I'm not sure what it is, but it might be a new season of the show. So, I really do hope that Disney... And Alex Hirsch, really do hope they stay true and faithful to the original series. Uh, like, if you want to create a new, entirely new show, do it. But don't don't ruin another show that you worked on. A perfectly good show that has a perfectly good ending, and it, it, it's it's really beloved by a lot of people. Don't use that as a step ladder to essentially climb that to be able to make your adult theme jokes. It, it, to me, it's a little bit just disrespectful, not only to your to the people that watch your show and were fans of it, but it's also disrespectful just to uh, parents, and people that have shown their the, this show to, to to their children and stuff like that, which I have watched. And to be fair, I, I don't think the show is that bad. It's, it's a perfectly fine uh, sh TV show. Now, obviously, there's a few things that I look back on. I'm like, I don't know about this. Um, you know, Gravity Falls isn't perfect in every area. And even though that this channel has been dedicated to uploading Gravity Falls clips, it's not a perfect show by any means. And I don't think it ever will be. But even if there's a, some sort of new thing that comes out with Disney and Alex Hirsch and there's some new collaboration that happens, I really do hope that it still tries to stay faithful to the series and doesn't try to go for this extremely um, adult audience that it's trying to... I guess appeal to I don't, I don't really know what else to say other than that but uh, anyway so even in the original th journal three there was a bunch of uh reveals that happened throughout journal three this book is no different than that it has a bunch of a bunch of tiny little puzzle pieces that you you know you assemble them and it makes a full puzzle but there's some interesting things about dipper uh his parents were fighting now it's it's left very ambiguous so it's kind of like the Shermie thing. There's like a character called Shermie in the show. That was never really elaborated on very further, but we know that there was somebody named Shermie. We don't really know what happened to them or, or whatnot. But Shermie was a character in the Tales 2 stands. It's, it's something like that where we get some... Like, we almost get a peek into Stan's life. But in here, we're getting a peek into Dipper's home life a little bit here. Um, and so we get a peek into Mabel and Dipper's home life. And we see that the parents um, that, you know, Mabel and Dipper's parents, which are never really given a face in the series. I, I don't understand this trope. This is a common trope that you see where they will hide the face of the parent. My, my point is, is that the parents of Dipper and Mabel, essentially, they are having a fight. Um, and so that's why they rush them off uh, to go um, to Stan's place during the summer. Now, we do actually know about their parents because their parents are in, I think, one of the finales where he's taught where Stan is talking to the parents on the phone or one of them parents on the phone. So, but it implies that there's going through some sort of, uh, mar marital issues, um, or that there's some sort of thing. And, and I, I don't know, it's very ambiguous. Again, you can come up with so many different solutions to like what's maybe is going on, but I don't think really none of them would be like, I don't know, maybe the husband is is in infidelity or something. I don't know. There, there's a lot of different possible explanations for why the parents were arguing, but essentially there was a nightmare that Dipper had of his parents or something arguing. I'm not really sure. Okay. I didn't read the entire book. I'm just, re I'm just reciting the contents of what has actually been described in this book because I'm not really going to buy this book because I have no interest in buying a book like this. Now, I will say the art is very good. From what I've seen out of the art, the art is very good. Um, so credit to the people that did the art for this book. The art is very good from what I've seen. Um, it's just very striking. I will say that now it is weird, but it is very striking no less. And I think it's 
So yeah, the, the mystery with Bill Cipher uh, seems to be, you know, it seems to be sort of describing Bill as a character. It almost uh, makes uh, sympathize with him as a character. Now, I'm not saying he's still a villain, obviously. But this book kind of allows you to be able to have a little bit more sympathy for him as a character because you get to learn more about him as a character. And so yeah, there, it does go into more of Bill's origin story, his backstory about his, you know, where he came from essentially. Um, and I, I don't know the exact specifics of it, but um, I do know that that is something that the book talks about. Um, overall, my thoughts on this book is, I think it, it definitely has some interesting things in it. Like, again, the fact that we now know that Bill is in some sort of thera prism, a tri like a triangle prism. And you have all these different monsters that I think some of them have appeared throughout the series, like the Cthulhu uh, and like other characters that have appeared throughout the show. Um, you know, Cthulhu is like a, a huge thing. It's like, you know, you guys probably know who Cthulhu is, but yeah, clearly the creator uh, Alex Hirsch has something set up with, especially with the mentions that Bill is... Um, trying to make deals with people and you know like in the real in the real world um, and that you know it seems like there's some implication here that there's gonna maybe be a cipher hunt too or or some sort of uh, ARG that's gonna happen or maybe even a, a new series that's gonna that's gonna be teased um, I don't know there's just a lot of questions that we have at this stage but uh, the book actually features a lot of like the I think I don't know if it's like missing journal entries but just journal entries that we didn't really get to see um, in journal three and maybe some of from the other like maybe it's just like a combination of entries throughout the, all of the journals and so there's a lot of interesting things um that kind of are talked about in this book it does definitely recontextualize our understanding of the series um but does it shake the ever entire foundation of the series to the point where it's all meaningless no i think this book from what i've been seeing that it doesn't do that so i guess that's one thing i will say that, that the book is doing good is it's not trying to shake the entire foundation and just make it all go away like imagine if you had a book that just completely rewrites your entire understanding of something that's kind of not good writing that's just like that that's not good writing that's just destroy everything that we came before and let's rewrite an entire new thing that you have to now um like yeah, sure okay i think for an impact if you're trying to leave an impact sure that would be the way to go but if you're not trying to make an impact and you're not and you're just caring about the actual integrity of the work that you created then you don't want to just change everything like this is probably a book I would say, since it's being sort of in Bill Cipher's perspective for the most part, where it would be like an unreliable narrator. So not everything in this book should be taken as like, if Bill Cipher says something, it's not necessarily how it's exactly, how he's exactly describing it because, you know, Bill Cipher uh, has a very warped perception of what reality is. But there is some issues with it, I will say, from that, from the, just the idea that, the, you know, we're taking a children property and we're trying to make it, and then we're gonna, we're, we're trying to build our way there through a sort of gradient of oh well it starts here it starts being uh, kid friendly but then now we're going to progressively you know keep going the other direction and i feel like that's going to happen with like if there's going to be a continuation of gravity falls we're going to see it like this is basically uh alex is trying to get us uh, on board with that i guess um i'm not really sure but um but again i haven't read the book so i have no way of judging that I'm sure there's parent guides out there that will talk about this book and talk about what it's contained within it. I haven't read any parent guides, but I'm sure there is. I'll probably show one on screen if there is. And so yeah, this book overall, I think there's good some good things, some good little nuggets in there that you can get from. And there's some some like I, I do like the idea that this is a book that is written by Bill Cipher almost, and that it it's in his perspective, which I think is an interesting way that the book is kind of all over the place. It's sort of a justification to just put whatever you want in this book without any repercussions. But I mean, to be honest with you, I think it's uh, I, I, from what I've seen, I don't think it's that bad. Okay, I thought it was gonna be way worse than what it was initially. Like, I mean, it could be. I mean, it could be way worse. I don't know. I've read the entire book. People have been definitely blurring the lines between what is adult and what is children, and I don't think that's right. I think there needs to be a clear line defined between in the sand between what is adult and what is children, and I don't think those lines should cross because they are meant to be separate. They are meant to be in separate camps. They're not meant to be to, to, to coalesce. I'm sorry, they are not meant to coalesce. And if you think that they are, then sure, that's that's up to you. But I personally, I have a problem with it. I think it's morally not good. I want to be clear, I don't have any problems with Alex Church as a person. You know what's funny though? Um, me, I've actually had one inter this single interaction with Alex Hirsch. I think it was like sharing an image of, um, and he interacted with it. So like he he interacted with me once 
on Twitter, um, and I think he needs to really think some of the decision making if it's if it's if it's posing harm to, to people that are children. I really don't think that's a good idea, and I know people might see I'm taking this way too seriously. That's what I'll say about this. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.